Okay, today we want to talk about initial startup on a new Hanky Buffalo uh, 1254 roller mill. We'll start at the front and work back. An important thing uh, to remember on the PTO shafts is the two yokes that are welded to the telescoping tubes of the PTO should be in alignment with each other. If they're 90 degrees off from each other, you may experience uh, shear bolt uh, issues on the drive yoke at the front of the PTO shaft. The T-handle on the right hand side of our roller mill is designed to allow the idle roll to be squeezed against the drive roll to control the particle size of the grain you're running through the roller mill. When the T-handle is up, the rolls are separated apart. When you pull down, it squeezes the rolls together. There's a second stop bolt here that is set at the factory at the point where the rolls contact each other. So particle size can be adjusted simply by running the T-handle up and down. On the T-handle, there is a T-handle lock, so once you find your desired position, for the particle size you desire, you simply lock that setting with the T-handle on the side. In all of the Hanky roller mills produced, in our hoppers uh, there's magnets to catch unwanted metal uh, and materials coming through the roller mill before it gets to the rolls themselves. You'll also notice in the center of the hopper a deflector plate designed to deflect the corn over the width of the rolls. Below the deflector plate is a adjustment gate which controls the rate of flow of grain out of the hopper directly to the crush point of the rolls. The gate control is adjusted with a handle on the back side of the inlet hopper. Uh, to the left shuts the gate uh, to the right opens the gate. Normally, as a rule of thumb, we like to see the handle set at the 12 to 1 o'clock position. Uh, allowing more grain to try to flow to the rolls than what the rolls are capable of taking causes that grain to windmill on top of the rolls rather than dropping between them and running through the mill. This can cause excessive wear on the teeth of rolls. Uh, thus requiring replacement much sooner. Ideally, grain should drop directly through the roller mill and out the bottom. You'll notice on the hydraulic drive motor on the end of the inlet auger that the four lock nuts on the mounting studs have been purposely left loose by the factory. If these should ever be tightened, damage can occur to the orbit motor, such as broken shaft and seals particular roller mill is equipped with one of our 18-foot discharge belts. The belt comes around the drive roller up in between two rollers where it's pinched and back down under a third roller that's used as a tracking roller. Uh, this is what actually drives the belt for the discharge. The third roller at the bottom of the belt discharge is our tracking roller. This roller is also used in taking up the initial bulk slack of the belt. To adjust the tracking at the bottom of the belt discharge, this alignment roller or tracking roller is adjusted up or down on the left or right hand side. If you push down on the left side of the roller, it causes the belt to track to the right and vice versa. You'll also notice above the tracking roller, is a safety bolt that prevents that roller from coming loose or out of track uh, should the nut loosen up on the end of the roller. To check the tension of the belt, there's several things you can look at. It should take 40 to 50 pounds of pressure for the belt to contact the bottom of the tube. Uh, if the belt is too tight, if you look inside the end of the tube, the corners or sides of the belt will want to curl. That's a sign that the belt's actually too tight. This does the final belt tensioning as well as the tracking 
for the top end of the belt. So you can control the tracking at either end of the belt discharge. On our inlet auger, you'll notice a hydraulic flow control. This allows you to adjust the speed of the orbit motor that drives the inlet auger. You'll also notice at the top of the flow control valve, there's a little cap. Underneath that cap is a pressure relief setting, should you feel you need to increase the pressure in running that auger. At, at the bottom of the roller mill, you'll notice a drain and sample tube uh, with a PVC cap on it. You'll notice a distinct whine on any of our new roller mills. Do not be alarmed. Uh, that is the rolls rubbing on some belting that we use to uh, assure no green getting along the back side of the rolls coming out of the hopper. Uh, that will be a wear-in item after a couple loads of corn.